very special thanks to the video sponsors. Check the links in the description. Working from home in some sort of professional manner can be awesome and it can suck. I'm deep in that journey in some sense and I'm making the transition from a home that I own to a home that I'll be renting for about a year or so. Today the materials arrived and I'm going to begin phase one of treating the room. I'll be doing this in two phases as I don't have everything that I need right now, but I need to work nonetheless. The work I'll be doing in this space is both music recording in addition to video production. The space is a bonus room above a garage. The main portion of the room is about 19 feet by 19 feet with a ceiling height of nine feet high at the center of the room. The goal is to treat the room to control as much as possible while maintaining as much usable space as possible. To accomplish this, this time, I'll be using a track system from a company called Fabric Wall. The track that I ordered holds two inch thick insulation. The concept is very simple. Use the track system as a guide to hold the insulation and fabric to the wall, turning either a portion or the entire wall into an acoustic panel or a fabric wall. So I really like the concept of this product. So I'm gonna share some of my thoughts with you on using it on phase one of this project. So not only have I never used this product before, so this is my first time, I didn't have the correct tools that I needed to do it. I was under a huge deadline to get it done and I made some mistakes. Hopefully there's some good takeaways for you if you wanna use a system like this to treat your room. Electric stapler, not gonna cut it. Can't break through the material. So, long story short, I wound up going over to Cole Catherine's and borrowing his pneumatic crown stapler. So we're gonna try this again, but with some power. Hopefully this goes faster. Here we go. This tool goes so much faster. Again, this is a pneumatic crown stapler with an air compressor. So this will hold the pieces tight to the drywall while leaving very minimal damage, which is awesome for the fact that I'm in rental house. I have to cover these holes. All right, so as you can see, I am cutting the pieces to length to cover the outside perimeter of the wall. And after I finish the outside perimeter of the wall, I'm going to cover the perimeter of the window because I'm not going to cover the window with fabric and insulation. After the perimeter is done, I'm going to do the square edge mid-wall track pieces. What's really cool about this track to me is it not only holds the insulation in place like a frame for a base trap, but it also grips the fabric. Alright, now I'm going to put on a cool suit and I'm going to take out this insulation and stick it in there. I'm going to have to come back to the power boxes because I need to extend the cable just a little bit. I want to put the insulation in first. Due to how fast I needed this done and uh, it being the holidays and several other things, me just rushing this, I wound up going with the Rockwell Safe and Sound Insulation, which is three inches thick. Not meant to be used on this kind of track system, but hey, what are you going to do? Next time in phase two, I'm going to go with the fabric wall core fiberglass because it's actually designed for the track. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to see how phase two goes because it's going to be very different than phase one. Day two, I have the insulation on the front wall completed. I also snapped together the frame with the cloud, which is six feet by five feet and an inch. It's not, it's not done. Okay, now that I have extended the wall, I needed an extension box for my power outlet. So I found this two inch extension box at Lowe's, got some new outlets and some wire to extend the run, popped it on there. Very easy to use and very cost effective. Only took like 20 minutes to do this. Also, this is not advice. Please don't do this. If you're not qualified, contact a professional. This is for entertainment purposes only, of course. All right, now time for fabric. This was a very fun part of the process and a special shout out to Guilford of Maine for making this beautiful, 
beautiful fabric that I'm using. They are sponsoring this build out as well as Sweetwater. So shout out to Guilford of Maine. If you're looking for fabric for your studio build, they make the absolute best fabric. And this was, gosh, it just looks amazing. Even with my terrible installation that I did. Look at that. It just looks gorgeous. And of course, thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. If you guys are looking for some good new gear for your studio build out, Sweetwater.com. Links in the description. All right, so this installation process of the fabric was tricky. One, I did not order the tools that I needed from Fabric Wall. And because I was rushing over the holidays to get this done, they were not open and I could not get it. So I went to Lowe's and just got a tool that's used for mudding drywall and uh, it was pretty tricky. There was certainly a learning curve. Eventually I got the hang of it, but boy was my hand sore. I also ran into an issue doing the fabric because I did not cut the tracks correctly. And this is where fabric wall comes in to save the day. See, I did this going in blind with no idea how to install this or cut anything or using the wrong products and everything. So in the phase two build of this room in a follow up video, fabric wall is going to help me show you how to cut the track properly so that it looks super pro. And I will use their tools to install it as well as their core fiberglass insulation. So in the next video, we'll be able to compare those differences, see those details, do it the right way, and it will be much easier for me to install. Now that the fabric wall is complete on the front of the room, it is time to put together and hang the cloud. The cloud is a one inch by four inch unfinished pine board. I'm going with a bigger sized cloud for this room because the room is a little bit bigger and I want some more width out of the cloud to cover the stereo image a lot. Better. So this is six feet wide and five feet long, again, four inches deep. I'm going with the black fabric from Guilford of Maine on the cloud, and I am loving how it looks. I'm actually wrapping the entire thing in fabric so that there's no loose insulation that comes out of it. Now, in order to mount this, I'm going to add a couple extra pieces of this unfinished pine board to the top and use that to hang it from the ceiling because the center of the ceiling is so narrow. I need some support. So I'm going to actually mount it from these boards here. Now to make this thing fit, because it's so wide and the ceiling's so narrow, I had to hang it just right. So what I did was I had the far end by the window hang down slightly lower so that it's closer to the speakers and I have that nice tight imaging. And then I brought it up as the cloud goes out into the room just as high as I could without touching the side ceilings. And as you can see, it looks amazing. I am really, really happy with how it turned out. As you can see, I haven't quite moved in all of the way had to get this build done first so i'm using this temporary desk setup if you guys are curious about any of the stuff i'm using links are down in the description special thank you to my sponsors make sure to subscribe if you want to see how phase two turns out like this video if you guys like the video and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments i will see you in the next video